things at your school. And are you trying to set the precedent with the rest of the SEC and say, hey, veterans just no push over? Well, I, I think more than anything, we're just doing everything we possibly can to give us the best opportunity to win on Saturdays. You know, the more days we win in the off season, whether it's developing our players, whether it's recruiting, uh, you know, if their players are better than us in high school, they're probably going to be better than our players in, in college. So we want to make sure we give us ourselves the best chance to be competitive. One, one more question, and I'll, I'll stop. Now, great your uh, front line, your offensive line, if you've got a great running back, who you've got to commit them from, is your front line pretty comfortable? They can hold, hold the line and let him get through? Yeah, obviously offensive line, defensive line, being able to be dominant up front on both sides of the ball is so important to what we're trying to do. Creating depth, which has really been an issue. Uh, you know, that's why recruiting that position, developing the players we have, you know, that, that's an area. That's an area we're going to have to improve uh, dramatically from maybe years past. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Steve Spurrier, uh, he, he didn't really agree with some of the, the agenda of Mike's life, but I'm assuming with your academics and your Vanderbilt, you have no problem with that. Yeah, I, you know, obviously the more rules that are put in place, the higher standards um, is, is good for Vanderbilt because we're already living um, to those expectations and levels already. We already live at a higher standard. So, uh, you know, the more rules that are put in place across the country to level the playing field, I think, is good for Vanderbilt. But I also want to make sure that you guys understand uh, I'm not an elitist when it comes to education. Uh, I think this is an opportunity. Uh, education is an opportunity to, for the betterment of that young man. It's also for a betterment of society. So I want to make sure that we're also not getting in a situation where, uh, where we're, we're taking away opportunities from young men as well. Coach, how's it been for you, for you uh, moving into your first year at, at Vanderbilt? I mean, the transition, meeting so many people, getting out on the road, you've been been very busy. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I would make the argument at a place like Vanderbilt with the things that we're trying to do, um, I, I think you probably have to wear more hats than maybe some other places, and I'm fine with that. Um, you know, we're getting to that point of the year right now where we're going to have to really focus, and my attention now is going to be more specific to football, where before I really hadn't said no yet to anything that I've been asked to do. Uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what we're doing, the direction we're going. But you know, we understand we have a very, very big challenge, but we also look at it as a very big opportunity. Coach, how uh, hands-on are you going to be with the quarterbacks, given your previous quarterback history? Yeah, you know, one of my best friends uh, as a head coach in the NFL, we had a lot of conversations how he handled his first year compared to year two and three, and had a lot of discussions. And, uh, you know, from my, from my background, I just think I'm going to need to be involved. That's kind of my personality anyway. I don't think I'll be comfortable just standing there, uh, not being involved with the quarterbacks, not being involved uh, with the offense, and really the defense and special teams as well. I'll have my hands on everything that I feel like I can have an impact in a positive way in our program. Coach, this is your first stop in media days, and I'm sure you looked at the schedule. What did you think when you first saw that schedule of all the gauntlet you've got to run through today? Yeah, you know, I think like we spoke about before, I, I'm excited about it, and, and it's amazing. You know, it's a spectacle, I would probably say. But, you know, my focus really has been on not really coming and winning the media day. My focus is coming and, you know, and building our program so we can win on Saturdays. I understand that this is important. Perception is a powerful thing. Representing the SEC and representing Vanderbilt, I take great pride in. But our focus is, is, is giving our program the best opportunity to win on Saturdays. So I, it's not like I spent three or four days preparing to come win this media day. We have, we have, enough, we have enough challenges and issues that we're trying to overcome. Coach, speaking about perception, there's a perception that there's a ceiling for our band in terms of recruiting. You, 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 you might have a perception that there's a ceiling. That's we don't have That's the question. Well, there's a perception out there. Not yes. You. There's a perception out there that there's a ceiling. Right. So when you go out there and you're getting these recruits to come in, top recruits, the state of Tennessee for coming to you instead of going to Tennessee. How are you doing that? What message are you expressing? I guess that, that was my point is, is I'm worried about our perception internally first. You know, before I can affect any external perceptions of, of who we are, I'm focused on how we see ourselves, how we perceive, how we handle ourselves, what our expectations are. You know, when we're able to change that, then we'll be able to start affecting others. Um, you know, we have an opportunity, we bring a young man to come visit Vanderbilt and their family. We have an opportunity to offer them uh, things that very few schools can. The opportunity to get a world-class education, opportunity to play in the greatest football conference in America, the SEC, opportunity to live in a great town like Nashville. You're talking about, I'm, I'm a big believer that your education is more than what you just learn in the classroom. It's a combination of all your cultural experiences, and Nashville can provide that. You know, and then the fourth factor, um, you know, most young men want to play early. 
and, and we obviously can offer that as well. So, you know, I, I, I don't see the ceiling. You may see the, see the ceiling, but I, I can't control how you see Vanderbilt right now. Uh, I want to make sure that we understand there is no ceiling. You know, uh, we will go as high as we decide to go. The, pro, the players will be as good as they decide to be, and we're going to put them in a position to be successful. Coach, what's your goal on the field for year one? Yeah, our goal is to improve every way we possibly can. You know, we talk about carpe diem in the program, seize the day. Wake up every single morning and attack it with everything you have. And that's, that's academically. You know, compete in the classroom. That's athletically. Everything we do on the field. That's socially. That's spiritually. That's the whole package. Um, so, you know, what, what, I, what, I, what I say is, what I want people to do is I want people to look back at this year. And I want them to be very, very comfortable with the direction of the program on the field, off the field, the whole package, and, and that's how we're going to judge ourselves. I'm not going to get into a certain amount of wins and losses. Our focus is on Elon. You know, I'm not going to talk about any other game besides Elon. That's, how we, that's who we open the season with. And our plan is, whether it's 10-7 uh, or 21-7, or, uh, or, or whatever that score is, our plan is to come out of that game victorious um, and, and, and you know, really take two years' worth of frustrations out of it. That's our plan, not focus on any other games. Do you feel like you're at a disadvantage because you're the interim head coach and not the full-time head coach at this point? Well, I, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I'm not the interim head coach. I'm, I'm the head coach um, uh, and have been since I arrived on campus, so I'm um, not really sure your question. Uh, coach, uh, talk about you've got a ton of returns coming back. Talk about the challenge of that. New system coming in, guys have had experience, might want to break some habits that they've done before or change a few things. Talk about the challenge as far as your team goes. Yeah, I think the fact that we have returning starters is, is really good because we've got a foundation of young men that have played. What we have to do is we have to find a way to win. Um, you know, that's what we don't have right now. We don't have a bunch of guys that have won a bunch of games, that have a lot of confidence, that know how to finish when the game gets tough, and you need that critical point, and you can push through it. That's what we're trying to build. That's what our offseason has been about, um, and that's what our camp's going to be about. That's what we're going to try to do early in the season with a game like Elon, is go out, have some success, build some confidence, and go from there. So returning starters is important, but also being able to have a culture of winning in your program, I think, is more important. Coach, piggybacking on that, how big was the culture change? I mean, how much of that do you have to change as the new head coach? I think it's, it's, it's the most important thing we can do. Um, you know, you can look at programs across the country that they've won for a long time and a new coach comes in and it just keeps rolling. Uh, there's a system in place. Um, <clears throat> we, have, we have the opportunity, uh, like I said before, to differentiate ourselves and be able to make a change. Uh, we all know uh, in all our lives individually how difficult it is to change maybe some behaviors that you've been doing for a long time. So um, you know, I look at it as an unbelievable opportunity. Got a great staff, got a bunch of really, really good kids. Um, and I would, I would make the argument to you, our kids are so hungry right now um, that they're going to do everything we ask them to do because you're talking about kids that have been highly successful in everything they've done their whole life. They want that to continue. They want that to get going again. Coach, can you talk about Larry Smith? What do you like about him? What do you not like about him? You know, um, I'm pretty defensive about Larry. You know, uh, very, very supportive of him. You know, I look at a young man that I would recruit every year. His physical skills, uh, his intelligence, um, his approach to the game. I've been very, very impressed with him. From what I've seen on tape the last couple of years, it's really hard to evaluate Larry. Um, you know, so we, want, we need to make sure that we put him in position to be successful. We surround him with the right talent and the right scheme. Um, but you know, we're not ready to name a starter at any position. I want to create the most competitive environment we possibly can. Um, uh, but I also want Larry to have an opportunity uh, to earn that job and be able to compete in camp with some other guys, which you really didn't get the opportunity in the spring to do as well. Coach, the new schemes, did you get the work done in the spring that you wanted to get done? We got a lot of work done, um, but you know, although I'm excited for the season to start, I think there's also a part of me um, that you know, I'd also like another six months you know, to keep going. We have a lot of work to do, so I think whenever um, you, you're installing a new offense, a new defense, new special teams schemes, um, you know, there's an adjustment period, but what we're trying to do is through spring and all this summer, the guys working on their own and coming in and studying film and, and doing things like that, uh, we have to close that gap as fast as we possibly can because people don't want to hear that it's your first year. You either get it done or you're not. I'm sure you're the third head man in the last year, Fanny. Have you been pleased with how the upperclassmen have brought into your system? 
Yeah, you know, again, I, I can't control things that have happened in the past. All I can do is focus on what we're doing from here on out. And, and we got great guys, like I mentioned before, um, and they're hungry. They want to do well. I think very, very quickly they bought into what we're doing and how we're going to do it. Um, motivated, extremely motivated. I get the best strength coach in the country, uh, Dwight Galton. He's done an unbelievable job. Guy that I've known on and off for 10 years. Um, and, um, you know, he's able to kind of bridge that gap and he kind of knows what I want without even having to come ask me. So that's helped as well. So the last question. Coach, touch defensively a little bit. You talked about Larry and the offense. Defensively, you've got more of a great guy to build around. Talk about your side, that side of the football. Yeah, you know, I, we're going we're gonna to be aggressive on defense overall. Let me say that to start. But um, Vanderbilt's had a tradition of being pretty good on defense. Um, and we're going to build on that. And we're going to continue with that. Feel really good about our depth uh, on the D line and our depth in the secondary, and obviously having a Chris Marvin in the middle to run everything that helps. Uh, feel really good about what we're going to do scheme wise. We're going to be aggressive in everything we do, but I think the challenge that we maybe have on offense is a little bit different than the challenge that we have on defense, just because they've had success in the past on defense. So um, you know, I feel real good about what we're doing, the direction we're going, and having a guy like Chris Marvin lead you it really helps. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much.